Hello, I'm Pastor Chuck Seilstad, Senior Pastor of Center Points Christian Fellowship. I'm introducing a lesson today that we'll cover over the next few weeks, and it's very important because I, I, I want us to understand that the coming wars that are unfolding in prophecy are, are going to happen soon. I really believe that. See, with the current events taking place in and around Israel, I'm teaching a series that, in my opinion, is very crucial to understanding the end times. We're looking at events that I believe that through careful study of God's word and the prophetic scriptures that the Bible uh, will tells us in several events will take place soon on the last day's calendar revealed to us through scripture. Now, many theologians and scholars believe that, that a pre-tribulation event, in other words, taking place prior to the beginning of the tribulation, when the Antichrist is revealed. Uh, and these are some things that are going to take place. Now, I was, I've said many times before, I believe the rapture of the church can happen at any time, and there's nothing that needs to prophetically happen before it takes place because it's an at-any-moment event. It's going to take place regardless of what's going on in the world. But there are events that, that appear will happen prior to the beginning of the tribulation period. And looking back at my studies on, on Israel and the Middle East, and I really started looking at some of these things back in about 1992, I began realizing that there will be more than one upcoming war with Israel that will take place before the Antichrist appears on the scene and the tribulation period, which is Daniel's 70th week, begins. Now, in the last several lessons for this study on the prophetic events prior to the tribulation, we've talked about the destruction of Elam and that territory in Iran. We've talked about the, the destruction of Damascus and other areas in Syria where the, the, the national or the nation of Israel, uh, we talked about where they received their name. We talked about the exceedingly great army of Israel and, and that it's talked about in prophecies about the destruction of Israel's violent surrounding neighbors that will take place in the very near future. All these things that we've looked at so far. Well, the next set of lessons that we're going to study together will deal with the issue of Israel and the Psalms 83 prophecy which I call the Great Middle East War or the Arab-Israeli War of the End Times. And that exceedingly great army that I mentioned will be involved in it. Now, prophecy, it can be difficult uh, at times to understand, and it takes time to sort out all the scriptures to get the clear picture. Now, I'm not saying that my interpretation, as the well of others, is 100% correct. Now, I believe that we're on the right track here, but in light of current events and prophecy that has already been fulfilled and is continuing to be fulfilled today in the world, that we should examine what the Word of God says in a logical and a scriptural way. And I believe what we're talking about is going to happen this way. Now, Daniel chapter 20, verses 20 and 21 says, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, to whom belong wisdom and might. He changes times and seasons. He removes kings and he sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. I believe that God really wants us to understand. And that's why he gave us prophets uh, to, to give us word uh, in the word of God. You know, even before Israel became a nation again in 1948, there's been a constant attempt by Israel and other countries to reason together and to find diplomatic solutions to the problems in the Middle East. Now, some people and countries, they reject any request by Israel and or even the United States to work out a peaceful political solution, some kind of way of working things out. Some, such as Hamas and Hezbollah and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad and the Houthi rebels and other proxies of Iran, including Iran, refuse to lean towards any solution but their own violent response. When these terrorist organizations attack Israel and their citizens with rockets, infiltration, rape, murder, and kidnapping, they talk of resistance and justify their actions as acceptable and hide behind their religious beliefs. But when Israel retaliates against these terrorists, they cry out things like genocide and apartheid and ethnic cleansing against Israel, and, and the only diplomatic terms they declare are for Israel to accept their unreasonable terms and conditions. 
It's okay for them to hate and kill, but not for Israel. But when diplomacy fails, war becomes the only remaining option. And according to the, uh, the prophecy of Psalms 83, this appears to be what finally eradicates the age-old Arab-Israeli conflict. This climactic war will render all past political efforts to resolve the conflict null and void. <clears throat> it will demonstrate that a two-state solution or roadmap plans or lands for peace deals uh, were unsuccessful because they didn't address the heart of the matter. In the final analysis, it will be blatantly clear that the Arab states surrounding Israel don't want peace with the Jews because they want peace without the Jews. They don't want a two-state solution with Palestinian Jews living side by side. They want only one more Arab state called Palestine. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, we must understand that the Bible shows that this will never happen. It's not. They're not going to be living side by side in peace. It just won't happen because the coming two wars in Israel will really show that. See, the current Middle East events seem to be setting the stage for the final fulfillment of the Israeli war prophecies of Psalm 83 and Ezekiel 38 and 39. And we must keep in mind that the Arab-Israeli war of Psalms 83 and the Gog-Magog war in Ezekiel 38 are two separate events. When we view these events that take place in these two main prophetic passages of Scripture, we can really see a distinct difference between the two and a literal progression of events that take place. So we need to really look closely at this. Some teachers of prophecy, they believe that there's only one impending war and, and say that it's the Gog and Magog war. But the inconsistencies of teaching there is only one war is too big to ignore. I mean, dividing them into two separate wars eliminates the problem of filling glaring holes in time and explains the advancement of events in a concise and practical way. It explains details that otherwise would, would, not, would go on unexplained. And I'll go into more detail as we go through this teaching. But for example, look at this quandary. When identifying some nations that the Bible refers to, a study must be done of the current nations and then through historical and geographical records identify who the Bible is talking about. For instance, the nations of the coalition of the nations that attack Israel in Psalms 83 and in that war are different than the ones that attack Israel in the Gog-Magog war. Now, curiously, Ezekiel 38 and 39, which describes nine distinct populations by their ancient names, including the current countries of Russia, Iran, Turkey, Libya, and several others, omits these Arab countries and terrorist organizations that are found in Psalms 83. Now, in light of the fact that these omitted populations are, are presently among Israel's most observable and surrounding enemies, and that these enemies, they occupy the lands that the Bible refers to by their ancient names. <clears throat> With this, we can identify who they are. Now, some teachers of prophecy say that Ezekiel 38 is impending and will happen next. And they've attempted to identify the Psalms 83 coalition in what Ezekiel 38, 6 calls the many peoples are with you of the Ezekiel 38 Gog Magog war uh, or uh, confederacy. But this isn't logical to group them that way when looking at the bigger picture and studying the Bible in a literal way, as we should. Now, yes, there will be other nations with the Gog Magog coalition, but it's not these ones that talks about in Psalms 83. We find that, that we, when we realize there are two separate wars prophesied about, they actually fit better in explaining why they do not appear in the list of Gog Magog war attackers. And I will uh, discuss that more in our lessons as we go. See, plus the, the state of security in Israel at the time of the attack of Gog and Magog is different from the security that's taking place in Israel today. The reason for the attacks and the other details will be revealed in our study to show the differences of the, these two wars. So we'll be looking at them. Now we can see the coming battle for Israel. As I've mentioned, the end times theologians and scholars and teachers speak a lot about the Gog-Magog war of Ezekiel 
Uh, it's a prophecy that predicts a powerful confederacy, apparently led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey with other nations that is, des that is destined to someday invade Israel. Some think that its fulfillment is knocking at our door. But over the years, anytime something happens uh, in or to Israel, some of these theologians uh, immediately say, oh, it's the beginning of the Gog Magog War. I used to have someone call me every time something happened or a rocket would fly. Oh, it must be the Gog Magog War. No. But see, the lesser known prophecy is being noticed in studies gaining momentum and importance for our day. Things are happening. We're starting to see these things. It's the Psalm 83 war in which a different confederacy of enemies attempts to wipe out Israel and for different reasons than the Gog Magog. Now this Psalm, Psalms 83, seems to be addressing current issues in the Middle East planned by the nations conspiring to destroy Israel completely. They want to completely wipe Israel off the face of the map. The Lord reveals information to us through his prophets in the Bible to give us an understanding of events as they unfold in the end times. See, Amos 3, 7 says, For the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets. And we just have to learn how to understand the, what the prophecies are. See, there are several passages in the Bible that refer to the war we find in Psalms 83. But for now, let's, let's turn to uh, Psalms 83 instead of those other scriptures. We'll come to them later on and look at Asaph's vision of a future war in Israel. Now, some scholars try to say that the Psalms 83 is just a prayer muttered by Asaph in the Old Testament during a time of stress. But we actually discover that Psalms 83 is more than a prayer or a plea to God for vengeance on Israel's enemies. It reveals that a 10-member confederacy wants to destroy the chosen people and possess the promised land. Psalms 83, 1 through 2 says, O oh God, do not keep silent. Do not hold our peace or, or your peace or, or be still. O oh God, for behold, your enemies make an uproar. Those who hate you have raised their heads. See, this psalm was not written during a time of war. It was written some 3,000 years ago by King David's worship leader Asaph during a time of great prosperity, liberty, and peace. So it's not a, a stressful time. King David had decisively triumphed over Israel's enemies, and Israel could expand freely since the superpowers of Egypt and Assyria were both declining at that time. David's kingdom, therefore, extended from the Red Sea to the Euphrates. But Asaph was not just a worshiper, According to 2 Chronicles 29.30, he was also a Choseth, or a seer, a prophet. 2 Chronicles 29.30 says, And Hezekiah, the king, the officials commanded the Levites to sing praises to the Lord with words of David and of Asaph the seer. And they sang praises and gladness, and they bowed down and, and worshipped. See, he, as a prophet, Asaph saw beyond this period of peace, to a time when this confederacy would seek the utter destruction of Israel. Psalms 83, 4 says, They say, Come, let us wipe them out as a nation. Let the name of Israel be remembered no more. We can see what is happening in Israel today, and this warns us that the time now seems to be nearing. It's close. Even though Asaph's vision was received in a time of peace, it must have been a cause for some concern since many named in the Confederacy had previously demonstrated their hatred. Of course, even today, conspiring against the Jewish people is considered nothing new as it has been happening time and time again throughout history. You know, from the Philistines in the Old Testament to the Nazis of the 20th century and the Jewish people have been plotted against with the idea of destroying them completely as a final solution. And it's taking place today. As it says in Psalms 83, 2 through 3, For behold, your enemies make an uproar. Those who hate you have raised their heads. They lay crafty plans against your people. They consult together against your treasured ones. See, these two verses show the desire by Israel's enemies of laying up plans to destroy them. Today, we see a large increase and a rise in anti-Semitism across the world. 
in many countries. There are people carrying signs and crying out the slogan, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Well, there is no Palestine. There's Israel there. But that is not simply some empty slogan that some people say is just a call for peaceful coexistence with the Jews and their neighbors. That, When people say that, that is a total lie. So it's a lie from Satan. It is a threat to the Jewish nation of Israel and the, that they say the land will be cleansed of their presence from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea and the name of Israel will disappear and it'll be replaced by Palestine. Well, let me tell you something. That's not going to happen. The world recently learned that the October 7, 2023 attack on Israel by Hamas terrorist organization was supposed to be a part of a larger attack by many of Iran's terrorist proxies around the Jewish Passover in 2024. But the Hamas leaders jumped ahead early because they saw an opportunity to cause a large massacre at the Nova Music Festival in southern Israel. At that festival, more than 360 people were killed at the Nova Music Festival that celebrated peace, uh, along with rape and torture and murders and hostage-taking when armed Hamas fighters crossed over the border just 1.2 miles to the west. The young partygoers stood no chance because the desert scrub offered very little cover in which to hide and their exit routes were blocked by heavily armed Hamas gunmen who shot people along the road and rode on motorcycles and shot people and killed people. It was Plus the incursion by Hamas terrorists into other towns and villages took the lives of another 840 people through indiscriminate massacres and sexual violence. During this massacre, the terrorists murdered more than 1,200 innocent civilians, including infants and the elderly. Additionally, Hamas kidnapped 240 innocent Israelis as hostages. And their plans are to continue doing this until all the Israelis leave their country so the Arabs can take over. But this will not happen because God has a different solution. And it's interesting to take note here that the 10 nations of the Psalms 83 coalition have been involved in many attacks on Israel in the past, but they will come together this next time and it won't do well for them. I talked about some of those attacks and wars in my previous lesson last week. And as the viciousness and the hatred against Israel by these perpetrators has increased, they will come to a point where it will be an all-out Arab-Israeli war that will be won by Israel, and things there will be greatly changed by it. Now, I'm going to close for now, but I'll get more into a lot more of the detail as we meet for our next lessons, because I want to go into who these, these people are, some of the real reasons why they're attacking, and what will take place. And we'll pick up where we left off today. So for now, let's go ahead and pray, and then I want to, I want to see you next week when we talk some more about this. Lord, we just thank you for being with us today. Help us to be good scholars of the word. Help us to draw from what your word says so that we understand what it's all about, that we can be those good stu stewards of the word, that we can be students of the word that rightly divide the word of truth, and that we come out understanding more about what your word is telling us. Lord, bless us today. Help us. And we ask that you would bless our United States of America, other countries around the world as Christians call upon your name. And we also ask that you would touch Israel. You would protect them. You would keep them safe. Help the IDF to do their job. And Lord, these, these enemies of Israel, the ones that hate your name, Lord, we ask that you would reveal yourself to them. So even they would know who you are and they would turn from their wicked ways and they would come to know the true and the living God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, in your precious name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for joining in with me today for this teaching. And if you'd like to find out more about Centerpoints Christian Fellowship, uh, just send me an email at info at centerpoints.org. If you'd like to, to receive our weekly newsletter I send out on Sunday mornings, it gives you information about, uh, about what we're doing, our messages, our, our worship songs, all those things. Just send me that email at info at centerpoints.org. If you'd like to find out more about our Wednesday night Bible study, which people are welcome, we have it on Zoom conferencing. We have people from all over on that. Uh, or you'd like to find out about our Thursday morning women's Bible study, 
Just again, send me an email at info at centerpoints.org and I'll send you a, a link or a message back and we can talk. If you have a prayer request, you need prayer on something, uh, also contact me and we'd love to do that for you. We can put you on our prayer, uh, our prayer line. Uh, and you know, anything else you might need, uh, if you need to see more of these videos, our whole series on, on Revelation with and, and uh, the end times uh, with uh, what is it? we talk about the millennium, we talk about the tribulation, we talk about uh, the great white throne judgment, the forever after, uh, forever living in eternity with God, all those things. We have it on there. We talk about the rapture. There's many videos. You can find those on at www.youtube.com forward slash at uh, cpcf forward slash videos and you can sort them anyway you can see the different numbers are all in order so we'd we'll love to to uh, share that with you uh, you can find us also on uh, on uh, facebook and on our website uh, www.centerpoints.org so until i see you again stay safe and may god bless you and have a great day